Let me tell you a story. And like all good stories, this one starts with science. Okay, so maybe it's a nerd story about the mind and the body, but it's still worth hearing. What science tells us is that some of us are more likely to have terrible adulthoods. The depth of terrible and the likelihood of terrible is determined by what happens to us as children, particularly negative experiences. Scientists like to use terms that can be quantified, so they refer to these negative experiences as early life adversity or adverse childhood experiences, also known as ACEs. ACEs include things like poverty, and not the kind of poverty where your parents couldn't afford a second home by the lake, but the kind of poverty that makes you feel unsafe. Your well-being is in question. You don't know where your next meal is coming from. You don't know if you're going to have safe housing. Having a parent with drug and alcohol abuse problems, a parent with mental illness, all ACEs. Abuse, whether it's physical, mental, or sexual, high on the A scale. The list goes on and on, but I think you get the idea. Anything that feels terrible and causes a strong stress response, probably an ace. So, what's an ace poster child look like? Yep, that's me, age eight. This photo was taken shortly after I entered into the foster care system. Unfortunately for me, on the day that that happened, they couldn't find a placement, so I was taken to juvie. For those of you unacquainted with the juvenile justice system, that's a prison for young offenders. Now, when you get to juvie, there's a procedure. Doesn't matter how you got there, you got to follow the procedure. So I was driven into a compound surrounded by razor wire, taken to a reception area. Let me tell you, it was not like a hotel. And I was sat down at a desk, and I was told to remove all of my personal items. And I had just had my ears pierced, and I was so sad because I knew that the holes would close up. So they locked away my personal items in a filing cabinet, and I was taken to a shower area, where I was told to strip and shower in front of a complete stranger. And then I was deloused with delousing powder, and I was given a set of juvie clothes and taken to my room, which in juvie, even in the least restrictive unit there, is a cell. Talk about an adverse childhood experience. Remember, I'm age eight. So what happens to a kid that's had a lot of aces? Well, unfortunately, science tells us that the outcomes are not very good. A large study done by Kaiser Permanente and the Centers for Disease Control published by Folletti and colleagues in 1998, told us that folks like me have a common trajectory. And that led to the development of the ACE pyramid, which I have re-envisioned here. So basically what happens is you have those ACEs, and as a kid, you're going to struggle emotionally, cognitively, socially. In my case, I had very severe learning disabilities, and I didn't learn to read functionally until almost the fourth grade. Math was a huge problem and remained a huge problem. Then you enter adolescence, and you want to escape from all those adverse childhood experiences, all that stress, and you start to engage in high-risk behaviors like drug and alcohol abuse. I've been there, I've done that. ACEs, high-risk behaviors galore. Then you get to adulthood, and unfortunately, all those high-risk behaviors and all that stress begins to take a toll on the body, and you begin to get sick, and you begin to have disease, and you begin to have problems in society if you keep up those high-risk behaviors. 
When someone like me sees the ACE pyramid, it's hard not to be disheartened. Really, that's my future? An early death? And the good news, it goes on, and that's sarcasm, of course. It turns out that if your brain is bathed in stress hormones, growing up, particularly during critical periods of development, the structure of the brain becomes altered. The gray matter, which is the neurons, and combined with the support cells, that gray matter gets altered. And the white matter, which are the ways that neurons communicate with each other through axonal tracts, those are those fiber tracts, the white matter gets changed also. For example, the hippocampus, which is an area of the brain critical for the development of long-term memory, that gets affected. Fewer cells there. Also, another part of the limbic system, the amygdala, that helps us respond to threats. It's our fear and aggression center. How it gets wired is different. And the prefrontal cortex, that's our executive part of the brain, and it helps with decision-making and planning and controlling the rest of the brain so it doesn't respond to everything as a threat. That gets affected, too, when you have a lot of trauma or ACEs growing up. A study done by Wong and colleagues and published in 2012 examined white matter changes in adolescents exposed to trauma or maltreatment growing up and adolescents who had not been. And the way Wong and colleagues did this study was they used a technique called fractional angiotropy. And that's a MRI-assisted diffusion measurement that looks at the white matter. You don't have to understand all of the neurobiology, neuroanatomy technology here. I had to get a PhD in neurobiology and behavior from the University of Washington in Seattle to be able to do that. But what I would like you to do is to be able to look at this image. And on the top panel, you can see the areas of the brain that were affected, where Wong found changes. And down below are those FA scores. And if you look, you can see that the maltreated youth consistently had lower scores. And that's across that panel. Additionally, when they measured these youth again five years later, the ones that had lower FA scores, they had higher rates of depression. So this is just a single study. We have to be cautious about how we interpret a single study. But lots of research has been done since then, showing both gray and white matter changes in individuals who've experienced a lot of ACEs. So as a neurobiologist, I feel pretty safe in saying the researchers are probably right. My brain, it is whacked. This is a picture of my mother as a young girl, woman, adolescent, teen. And it, she had a whacked brain, too. Like me, she ended up being taken away because of her mother's mental illness. She went into an orphanage, and at age seven, she was adopted. But that worked out kind of like somebody getting a pet from the shelter, giving it a name, and the deciding that they didn't like it and taking it back. I went into foster care at age eight, and although I was never adopted, I bounced around from home to home, just like my mother did. At 13, my mom ran away, and she became a teen parent. I ran away at almost 16, and I, at 17, became a teen parent. Neither my mother nor I graduated from high school. Both of us ended up in abusive relationships. Both of us, sadly, attempted suicide. So how is it that I went on to get a PhD and my mother 
bounced in and out of mental institutions, eventually becoming a missing person under suspicious circumstances. The police think she was murdered, but unfortunately, her body was never found. And I, I raised a daughter who never went into foster care, overcame grinding poverty and homelessness with a baby in tow, overcame low self-worth. I came to terms with my learning disabilities and my mental health challenges. And I'm standing here today giving a TEDx talk. Whoa! <laughs> how did that happen? No, seriously, how did that happen? Well, I can tell you one reason it happened. It's because I decided not to be a victim of my past. That's easier said than done, of course, and I am not going to pretend otherwise. This is a picture taken from my book, Alternate Ending, an inspirational true story about beating the odds. It's a double exposure. Maybe some of you are too young to know what that is, but that's back when cameras used film, and the film wouldn't advance all of the way, and you would end up with two images in the same frame. I picked it for the cover of my book because I think it represents the parts that we all have inside. Each of us has the potential to be a victim, or maybe we've been a victim. But we also have the potential to be our own hero, and that's me, with my hands on my hips. We are more than the product of our past. We are the product of our actions and our beliefs. This isn't about being sunny or optimistic or saying positive affirmations every day. Those things will help, but they will never be enough when all you want to do is lay down in the middle of the road and die. This is about getting up, brushing your dirty hair because you didn't have enough energy to take a shower, and putting one foot in front of the other until you are sitting in your classroom, sitting at your desk at work, or if needed, sitting in a doctor's office asking for help. This is about using your strengths and not spending all your time focusing on your weaknesses. It's about not expecting your road to look like anyone else's. It's your road and your road alone. It's about owning up to the fact that your brain doesn't work like everyone else's, but being willing to try and try again anyway. It's about making sacrifices and feeling uncomfortable really often. So what happens if you do all that and you do it over and over and over again? Well, as a neurobiologist, I can tell you that eventually your brain will change. It will start to look like all those people who didn't have a bunch of aces growing up. Not exactly like theirs, but more similar. Over time, the things that once seemed hard will get easier. Your goals will get closer and closer and closer. And then one day, you will have achieved them. But only if you swim through all of the muck. Scientists and research studies, they do not define us. We define us. The ongoing, unsexy application of will, that defines us. I think it's important to note here that other people can make the application of will either easier or harder. If you're someone in the audience that wants to help a grown ace poster child like me, please know that you can't rescue them. They actually have to rescue themselves. But what you can do 
is you can offer them love, and you can offer them support, and you can offer them encouragement. And that is a blessing of immense proportion, and it will make a difference. Any other ACE poster children out there in the audience? Maybe you're sitting there and you're really wondering, can I have a better life? Will my life ever be happy? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm standing here today as proof. I got here because I was willing to take risks. You don't have to drive a motorcycle 6,000 miles cross-country solo like I did, but you have to be willing to be scared some of the time and keep moving forward. Science, it informs. But there are always exceptions to the studies out there. And you, if you're an ACE poster child, you can be one of those exceptions. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you.